All right, Shalom, Yasha Allah. Back with another GMS on the go. I'm Brother Nakam with the Raleigh, North Carolina camp. Channel GMS Stay Woke. But before I go any further, I'd like to give all honor, all glory, and all praises to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashem, Kakwadash. Next up, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who teach us this truth according to the Bible who rule well. And the double Shalom to all the Sisiakim. Shalom. And I'm pretty much just going to get into a Lord willing edifying lesson today on prophecy, man. That's the times we're living in. Yahweh Ba'ashem, Shah, the God of the Bible, making good on their word. Bringing these own prophecies to the past, you know. So I'm just gonna get a couple precepts on prophecy, but I'm gonna start off with the book of um Second Edges, the 15th chapter. This Second Edges, chapter 15, verse one. Behold, which behold means to look. Speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. That's right, and that's what the true men of the Lord, the true prophets, are gonna be doing. Which we know who the true prophets are. It's starting with our apostles and other great millstone and young brothers like myself in his faith, you know. We're the true prophets, you know, and we're coming to you so-called Negroes, Latin Americans as a whole, and we're speaking the words of prophecy unto you. Which prophecy means they say before something happens, you know. And the words of prophecy is not found in the Book of the Mormon. The words of prophecy is not found in the Book of the Quran. The words of prophecy is not found in the Book of Egyptology. The words of prophecy is only found in this King James Bible that's 1611. Because why? As the scripture said, these words are faithful and true. No one of these prophecies are going to fail. Either these words have already came to pass, or we're in the time for these words to fulfill itself. You see? And this is what we're speaking unto you so-called Negroes, Latin Americans. That is the ones who have the testimony of the Spirit of the Lord Yahweh We're speaking the words of prophecy unto you. Read it from the top again. This is second edge chapter 15, verse 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, said the Lord. That's right, because at the end of the day, these are not our words. These are how about Shemashah's words. And they put their words in our mouth, meaning what? They have given us a good understanding to know what this word is talking about, to be able to go forth and give you so called Negroes, Latin Americans, an understanding. You know? So these words are prophecy. It's nothing but prophecy all throughout this book. And that's what the true men of the Lord, the true prophets will be doing. In these last days, more now than ever, they will be speaking the words of prophecy. And I'm pretty much just going to grab a couple of precepts, you know, scriptures on prophecy that we're supposed to touch on. This is um, Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 1. Then said the Lord unto me, so this is the Lord speaking unto Jeremiah. Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be toward this people. That's right. And Moses and Samuel, as well as other righteous prophets, is who Yahweh by Shema Shah, the God of Bible, was dealing with, who he set up to lead the children of Israel. And even though Moses and Samuel stood before Yahweh by Shema Shah, the Lord's mind couldn't be towards two thirds of our people. You see, two thirds of our people have always been wicked, you know, have always been rebellious. And so the same way uh, Moses and Samuel stood before the Lord, is the same way the true men of the Lord today, again, start one of our pastors, other great millstone, down the younger brothers like myself, we're standing before the Lord. And the Lord's mind can't be towards two thousand of our people today because two thousand of our people are coming back in a lot, doing the same thing that they always done, being rebellious, being wicked. It says, yet my mind cannot be towards his people. It says, cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. Verse 2. And it shall come to pass. If they say unto thee, whether shall we go forth? That's right. So when all hell is broken loose, however the Lord sees fit. If two thirds of our people happen to see the men of the Lord in that day. They're going to ask us, whether shall we go forth? And this is what we're going to tell them. Then that shall tell them. Thus says the Lord God. So like it does said the Lord. Such as are for death to death. We're going to tell you. You're going to die. Your judgment in these last days is to get put to death. That's your future. It says. And such as are for the sword to the sword. 
which a part of that sword is this devil E, the so-called white man. Yahweh Bashimashah, sword is E. And he's going to use E to get at two thirds of our people. So that's another way that two thirds of our people are going to die by the by this damn devil, E. And it says, and such as are for the famine to the famine, two thirds of our people, some of you are going to die by the way of famine, starvation. And we know what the scripture says of Lamentations 4 verse 9. It's better to die by the way of a sword than hunger. Because dying by the way of hunger, starvation, that's a slow and painful death. It says, and such as are for the captivity to the captivity. Two thirds of our people are going to get thrown in FEMA camps. You know? And you're going to die in there. You know? This is the judgment that the men of the Lord, the prophets, are going to tell two thirds of you so called Negroes, Latin Americans in that day. You know? John verse 3. It says, And I will appoint over them four kinds, said the Lord the sword to slay, which the sword is any killing instrument. It says, In the dolls to tear, a lot of our people are going to be getting eaten by these dolls out here. You know, pit bulls, rottweilers, German shepherds, you know. These dolls will be eating at you people in these last days, man. It says, and the fowls of heaven, these birds. You know, you're going to have these ravens, you know, these eagles, these crows. You people going to be meat for these birds. These birds are going to have a good um, feast in these last days. It says, and the beasts of the earth to devour and destroy. Right, and the beasts of the earth. You're going to have these lions, these tigers, these bears. All different on um, crucial animals, you know, beasts eating at you people. The ones who um are not going to be in league with these animals because it tells you in Job, I think the fifth chapter, the the the, the men of the Lord, the prophets, and the multiple believers, we're going to be at league. We're going to be at peace with the the, the beasts of the field. But if you have Bashimashah not dealing with you, you're not going to be at league with the beasts of the field. You see, the beasts of the field, the beasts of the earth, they're going to be against you. And that's going to be two-thirds of you so-called Negroes, Latin America's judgment. Dying by the way of the beast. It said to devour and destroy. You know? So two-thirds of you so-called Negroes, Latin Americans, everything I just read in this chapter, this judgment coming for you in this near future. That's how a lot of our people are going to go out. Grab another priest. Uh, let me see. Go to the book of Isaiah 54. Bear with me, I can. Verse 16. This is Isaiah chapter 54, verse 16. Behold, I have created the smith that blows the coals in the fire. That's right. So Yahweh Shah, they created the smith. With the modern day smith that Yahweh Shah has created, is who? The scientists. It said, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. That's right. And these scientists that Yahweh Shemashah have created, they're bringing forth an instrument, a certain type of weapon for his work, for Yahweh Shemashah's work. It says, and I have created the waste to destroy. That's right. So that instrument, this certain type of weapon, that these scientists are bringing forth, that they're creating for Yahweh Bashim Al-Shah's work, is the waste to destroy. Which the waste to destroy is going into what? Those thermonuclear missiles. You see? Those 200 million warheads. Which will destroy this place called America in this near future. In this upcoming World War III. You see? So again, going back to um, what I was saying when I first opened with this lesson. If you have the spirit, the testimony of the Lord Yahweh Shah, this is what you will be doing. You will be coming in a spirit of prophecy. It's a, it's a lot of prophecy that's recorded in this Bible that needs to be spoken on, that needs to be talked about. We're in the days of prophecy. We're in a time of prophecy fulfilling this. So. Let me see. Uh, bear with me. I can get the book. Stay in the book. Isaiah 60. 65. This is Isaiah chapter 65, verse 13. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Yahweh Shah, Behold, my servant shall eat 
but ye shall be hungry. That's right, because this ain't happened yet. And Yahweh Shemar Shah saying, his servants, the elect of the nation of Israel, men, women, and children, knowing this great famine, because this is what it's going into, the elect is going to eat in that day. We don't know what we're going to be eating. We don't know how we're going to be eating, what time we're going to be eating, what point in time we're going to be eating. But we just know that the scripture said that the elect is going to eat in that day. And while we're eating, two thousand of our people are going to be hungry. Meaning what? They're not going to have anything to eat. This is a future prophecy. It says, Behold, my servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Now, that's right. And during this time of famine, not only is the elect going to be eating and two thousand of our people be hungry, but the elect is also going to be drinking that day while two thousand of our people are going to be thirsty. It said, Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye should be ashamed. That's right. And why is Jehovah Shema was shot servants, the elect, going to be rejoicing that day? Because during this time of famine, we're going to have food and we're going to be drinking in that day. We're going to be merry of mind. You know, we're going to be happy in spirit. While two thirds of our people are going to be ashamed. Because they're going to know the reason why they ain't eating. They're going to know the reason why they ain't got nothing to drink is because they're wickedness. And they're going to know that Yahweh Shema was shot is the cause of them not um, having nothing to eat and drink and during this time of famine. You know? Let me see. Probably get like one or two more precepts. Bear with me, Akim. Bear with me. Let me see. Go to the... Don't want to get Amos. Still in the book of Isaiah. 66, verse 15. For behold, which behold means to look. The Lord, Yahweh Shema Shai, will come with fire. That's right. And that fire that Lord Yahweh is coming back with when he makes his stick return back to the face of the earth is that fire from the um, the chariots, which the word he calls UFOs. Simultaneously, those thermonuclear missiles, they're going to sh be shot off in this World War Three. That's the fire that Lord Yahweh is coming back with. It said, in his chariots like a whirlwind, because we know how a whirlwind comes, a tornado. It comes powerful, you know, strong, destroying any and everything in his path. When those chariots pop up on the scene, they're going to come back powerful, you know, strong, destroying any and everything, you know, zapping you people, turning you to the powder by the way of that concentrated fire. It says to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. That's right. So, Lord Yahweh, that just goes to show you that he's pissed the hell off. He's mad. And when he comes back to the face of the earth, he ain't coming to play no games. He's coming with anger and with his fury to rebuke, which rebuke means to correct, with flames of fire, you know, especially two-thirds of you so-called Negroes, Latin Americans. You're going to be catching the most rebuke, the most correction. Why? Because you were given the right ways to know how to conduct yourself upon the face of the earth. And while the elect is trying to get right, you still want to be wicked and still try to act like these nations. So because you don't want to get right, the Lord is going to correct you. With flames of fire. Right along with the heathen nations. It says verse 16. For by fire. And by his sword. Will the Lord. Yahweh plead. Which please mean judge. With all flesh. And the slain. Meaning the killing. Of the Lord should be many. So in these last days. when the, Especially when the Lord comes back. There's going to be a lot of dead bodies out here. Once the Lord gets finished with this place man. The slain of the Lord is going to be many man. It's going to be so much death right here, it ain't going to make no sense. You know? So these are the things that we need to be touching on. You know? And there's many other prophets that I can, you know, could have went into. I just want to grab a couple. You know? Just touching on prophecy in this lesson. You know, but below willing the elected nation of Israel, so-called Negroes, Latin Americans, were edified. Before I go any further, I'd like to give all honor, all glory, and all praises to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rukakwadash. Next up, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and the Dove Shalom to all the Siachim. Shalom.